<laughs> and then what do you say? And then what you do? Oh, girl, I would have died. <laughs> No way! Stop it! Ah, oh my! I know! Yeah! What? Oh, I'm just making some milkshakes. <laughs> milkshake? Watch your show on any TV in your house with Iris, the new HD multi-room DVR from Rev TV. Start watching in one room and pick up right where you left off in another. Call to get Iris in your house today. The Foreign Affairs Minister talks homophobia and the referendum. Government tweaking the amended gaming bill. Plus, ambulance drivers protest at the office of the Prime Minister. We've got those stories and more coming up tonight. I'm Dana Smith and NB12 starts right now. Top of news tonight, Foreign Affairs and Immigration Minister Fred Mitchell has asserted that homophobic and misogynistic people are attempting to defeat the constitutional amendment bills because of their own agenda. Mitchell says he thinks some MPs are simply playing politics with an issue that should be taken seriously. Kyle Joaquin reports. Foxhill MP Fred Mitchell says debate on the constitutional amendment bills is being twisted by people who have political motives. He says if you have an issue with gay people or women getting equal rights in the country, then you should just say so. Mitchell says he doesn't think there is confusion but mischief making in debate on the constitutional amendment bills. On Wednesday, FNM leader Dr. Hubert Minnis raised concerns about some of the bills, this after calling for unity on the issue of gender equality just weeks ago. Fort Charlotte MP Dr. Andre Wallens, Marco City MP Greg Moss, and Bamboo Town MP Renwood Wells also asked government to reconsider the fourth bill, which seeks to end discrimination based on sex. Moss said the use of the word sex could pave the way for gay marriage. Well, Mitchell says while these are all intelligent men, some of them are bringing their personal feelings towards homosexuals and women's rights into the conversation. If you hate gay people, why not just come out and say, I hate gay people. I don't want them to have any rights in the Bahamas and I wish we'd do whatever with them. Just be frank and be truthful about it. Then we know what we're facing. If you don't like women and you don't like women to have rights, if you're a misogynist, fine. Just come out and say, I don't believe that, you know, and I don't believe they ought to have rights. But don't come with a smokescreen of an argument that just doesn't make any sense, no rational sense at all and then tell me that I'm supposed to change my position because of something which is patently untrue. Mitchell says a few of the people in disagreement with the bills are politically motivated and see the discussion as a golden opportunity. To some extent it may be because people are interested in political power and see that, well, this is a means of getting popularity because they know the population is inflamed when they, uh, or the population gets agitated when they hear anything to do with uh, LGBT matters. So you know better, but you use it as a pretext to excite the crowd. Chairman of the Constitutional Commission, Sean McQueenie, said yesterday that the commission is drafting a change to the bill which would likely include a definition of the word sex. Mitchell says he plays a minimalist position and isn't involved in the discussions. He says if the Constitutional Commission believes there should be a change, he will support it. The package which is before the House is acceptable to me now. I intend to vote for them. Um, and the package is one which was settled between the two political parties arising out of the work of the Constitutional Commission. So if the Constitutional Commission comes back and says um, we've changed our minds on various things and uh, there's an agreed position again between the parties, whatever the parties uh, present to the Parliament, then that's what I will support. Mitchell says he and many of his parliamentary colleagues plan on seeing the bills through so the November 6th referendum can take place. Reporting for MB12, I'm Kyle Joaquin. The Free National Movement is defending its leaders about face on the constitutional referendum bills, insisting Dr. Hubert Minnis demonstrated courage and wisdom by pulling back 
from the referendum abyss. Party chairman Darren Cash said in a statement this afternoon that the opposition is 100 percent committed to gender equality, insisting that anyone who suggests otherwise is being disingenuous. He said the FNM support has become critical because the government lacks support in its own ranks. However, he made it clear the FNM will not take the path the PLP took in 2002 when Cash says the opposition PLP established an agreement with then Prime Minister Hugh Hubert Ingram on the referendum process, then double-crossed him. While well, Attorney General Allison Maynard Gibson says same-sex marriage has nothing to do with the upcoming constitutional referendum, she was responding to claims that Constitutional Amendment Bill No. 4 could pave the way for gay marriage. The bill will make it unlawful to discriminate against someone based on sex. Some people have asked, very sincerely, some people and others perhaps not sincerely, but whether the word sex in the fourth bill opens the door to same-sex marriage. I want to make it very clear from a legal standpoint that the use of the word sex does not, in my view as the Attorney General, open the door to same-sex marriage. I say that if for no other reason that the very Constitution itself saves the Matrimonial Causes Act. And the Matrimonial Causes Act says that in the Bahamas, a marriage is a union between a man and a woman. Maynard Gibson said the word sex has been in the Constitution for decades and its meaning is clear. That the word sex has been in the Bahamas Constitution since 1964 it has always been known to mean a man or a woman. Further, the cases <laughs> make it very clear that even, uh, the cases and Privy Council cases, even where someone has had a sex change for the purpose of a marriage, your sex is your biological or chromosomal composition at birth. While suggesting his comments about the leadership of the PLP were inappropriate, Minister of Tourism Obi Wolchcombe said last night, Fort Charlotte MP Andre Rollins will not be victimized by the PLP. During debate on the constitutional amendment bills on Wednesday, Rollins said the PLP is not open to independent thinkers and the party used young politicians as mere tokens to help secure an election win. Wolchcombe said any challenges that arise within the party should be addressed internally. Vonique Toot reports. Tourism Minister Ovi Wilshkum is defending the leadership of the Progressive Liberal Party amid claims the party is not open to independent thinkers. Wilshkum was responding to Fort Charlotte MP Dr. Andre Rollins, who said orders are given to politically destroy members of parliament whose views differ from the government. Wilshkum questioned whether the House of Assembly was the right place for Rollins to blast his own party, but said he should not be condemned for it. I don't think the party operates that. I thought way. Uh, Andre Rollins is a young man. Does he have potential? Does he have uh, ability? Absolutely. Uh, does he have something to offer? He's already proven that. Uh, but he's a young man. And along the way, one day, uh, he will come to an appreciation that even in the organization that he run, he wouldn't want at his clinic for a member of his staff to go public saying things that could be resolved inside the clinic. That's something you learn along the way. So we're not going to victimize Andre Rollins. For what purpose? What do we have to do that for? We're not going to penalize him for his words. Wilshkum says it's up to Rollins to determine his political future and whether he fits into the philosophy of the PLP. In fact, he believes it can be a teachable moment for both Rollins and the party. However, he says if the Fort Charlotte MP had an issue with the party's leadership, he should have discussed it in a private setting. He is a man. He makes his own decisions. The way I would have done something is quite differently. I'm a part of a team. And being a part of a team requires that you understand that if I want to win a championship, I've got to practice in-house. I've got to talk about the issues in-house. He can take his approach, and he will have to look at his approach uh, down the road, and he will determine whether or not it's the right approach or the wrong approach. It's a teachable moment, a learning experience. He's a young man. He's been in politics for about two and a half years. So um, are you going to condemn somebody for things that they do in two and a half years? I don't think that's the way you do it.
As for Rollins' claim that orders are given to politically destroy MPs who speak in a fashion contrary to the party line, the West End and Bimini MP says nothing could be further from the truth, insisting the PLP promotes freedom of speech. The party never puts a, a seal over people's uh, views. They have a right to express themselves, and we celebrate that. Perry Chris is leader of the Progressive Liberal Party. Vernon Knowledge is the leader of the House. Brave Davis spoke out against the PLP and issues before. Will be Welsh who spoke out before. It's not new. It happens all the time. It's just a part of politics. You do speak out. The truth is, but we also understand in the party politics there's a place that we can speak. Wilshkam also took exception to Rollins' suggestion that young politicians were used as tokens to help secure the PLP's election when then cast aside. Graham, there's a process in which you learn the game, and the party never cast anyone aside. But along the way, everyone is prepared, whether you're in the politics, whether you're in sports, whether you're in church, whether you're in school, you have to go through processes. You can't walk in today and tomorrow it's all going to be there. You have to understand a few things. Rollins led the National Development Party before leaving the third party in 2011 to join the PLP. Reporting for NB12, I'm Vonik Tude. The Attorney General is hitting back at her cousin, B.C. Union President Paul Maynard, over comments he made concerning the referendum bills. The Union President said he does not support the Constitutional Amendment Bill, which would grant Bahamian women the same rights as Bahamian men to pass on citizenship to spouses. The Attorney General said although she doesn't want a family tit, his comments are not something that should be simply brushed aside. I'd like to say two things in relation to my cousin Paul Maynard's point. And this is not a family tale, because I can tell you that Paul Maynard will never sit down next to his cousin, his female cousin, and say that. With a, with an iota of seriousness, and I'm not smiling about it at all. In a recent interview, Maynard said, I cannot trust my daughter and granddaughter to do the right thing. I am not going to put that kind of pressure on them, not with these clowns out there, these lackluster, shiftless, trifling Negroes out there. The attorney general said her cousin's statement sends the message that women are unable to make sound decisions. And she pointed to successes Bahamian women have achieved, including women in Maynard's own family. Let's look at the facts. Paul Maynard's grandmother, mine, just like many other women who had households, it just so happened that hers was a single mother household, Georgiana Kathleen Simonet, <laughs> That's right. a single mother household, <clears throat> raised someone, raised four children. One of them became the deputy prime minister of the country. That's right. That's right. There are many single mother households. In fact, the majority of our households are single mother households. So the evidence is very clear that women can and do make sound decisions. Maynard Gibson said when it comes to the matter of women and girls being informed and educated, you only have to look at the facts. Look at the record. Look at the facts. Who is doing best in schools, elementary school and high school? <coughs> girls. They're being trained to make good decisions. Go to our universities, College of the Bahamas, universities all over the world. Who's excelling? <clears throat> Women, girls. So are you gonna tell me, Paul Maynard or anybody else who happens to have the same view, that, there's a, that women don't have anything between their two ears that enables them to make a sound <coughs> decision that impacts their lives positively and impacts the community in which they live positively. 